Hello everybody, Ryan Carpenter here with P45 Knuckle Down Golf, no BS golf on YouTube. Coming at you live this morning, uh, well recorded once you see it of course. However, kicking off November in style, <clears throat> the one time of year lesson sale has begun. Uh, I'm going to go through my story of P45 Knuckle Down Golf and how I got here. Uh, I think it's important, we're doing a lot of marketing stuff where, you know, their their work is to to get info out and, and little tidbits and whatnot. And they got their own things. And, but it occurred to me, it's important um, that people understand how this all come about. And so uh, to kick off the, the, the sale season uh, one time a year, basically holding a, a major lesson sale and I'll get to how that came about. So my background spent most of my lifetime in Kansas city, Missouri, uh, working at uh, private golf clubs <clears throat> uh, for a number of years, starting at, at a young age uh, you know, but just barely uh, pre high school age, anyhow, picking balls. And then eventually every day after school, you know, carts and bag storage and picking range and helping with tournaments and all that kind of good stuff. And so went on to college <clears throat> and, uh, at that point was pretty dead set that this is what I was going to do someday. And, uh, anyhow, during college, I got my first uh, assistant golf professional job and, uh, I went to the university of Missouri in, a, in town, a place called Country Club of Missouri. And I spent five years there uh, working in the shop and, um, you know, really got accustomed to the whole uh, golf professional world. Um, not to be confused with professional golfers. Those are two completely different things. Tour pro level player playing in tournaments, professionals playing for money are different than the working stiffs like us. On the other side, providing uh, the golf uh, atmosphere, and uh, shops and merchandise and cards, all the things that go into putting out the ability for y'all to go out and enjoy some golf. <clears throat> and so I, I kind of get into that, thought that was going to be my thing. Well, along the way, my own personal golf is what really got this thing going. I, uh, I took a lot of lessons and, um, you know, and I, and I did what I was told to do, uh, or so I thought anyhow, and uh, practiced hard. You know, worked hard at it. Did I see a little progression? Yeah, maybe a little, little. But I never really, you know, got to the point where I kept saying, like, look, I want to be able to play, like, professionally. We all have that dream, right? And um, and struggled mightily for years and years. And it, it was frustrating. It was difficult. Um, it was hard to keep, you know, pushing on. And, uh, and, and it kind of got to the point where, Got a little mad, to be honest, a little upset about it, you know, putting in a ton of effort, not really getting out of it what I, I hoped. And so I figured, well, there's got to be something to this, right? There are ways and there are people out there getting and figuring out, you know, what this is about. And so by then, you know, the dream had kind of died off, you know, got into college and, and I don't know, I probably could have walked on the team and maybe made you know, the seventh, eighth position, but you know, then you're not scholarship and you're spending all that time. You're not playing. I kind of said, yeah, to, to heck with that. And let's go on about the business of figuring out the future. And so all the years, and, and if anybody's ever done it, you sit behind that desk and especially in the winter time, there's a lot of time available to us to really hone in whatever we want to do. And so for me, I kind of got to where uh, thinking, okay, I'm going to try to figure this out on my own for one, and it didn't really dawn on me that it would lead to this whole thing down the road. But the main thing was I wanted to know anything and everything that existed in teaching golf, golf swings, um, you name it, coaching, blah, blah. And so I started spending all my free time studying and reading and studying and reading and getting my hands on everything I could. It got to the point where um, some of the pros I worked for, you know, they kind of noticed as well that I'd put this. So they kind of steered me in the other directions. I went into different seminars and I went to section things. And, you know, all along the many years, I got involved in all kinds of stuff, trying to, again, learn. Went to golf schools on my own, even brought some guys into the clubs I worked at, like Stan Utley, for example. Um, Stan, I met at CCMO. And then as he kind of grew into his role as, as more teacher versus PJ Tour Pro, I brought him to places like the Creek. I work in a place called the Creek and the easy way to explain that place is that um, so post-college as I'm continuing on, I went on to can back to Kansas city. Our uh, Wolf Creek uh, golf club is basically Augusta national uh, 
of the Midwest, if you will, or at least for Kansas City. It's the same basic principle, build of idea. Um, super limited membership, all about golf. We did everything at the highest level that existed at the time. And so I brought in guys like Stan Utley to do clinics and whatnot, and also for me to learn more. Um, but we got involved a ton of stuff at the Creek as well, from club fitting, like golfing by design, like high level tour tech vans and reps coming in. And so at that point, I knew for sure this is what I wanted more than anything. And so I spent a few more years, especially amazing three years. And we had some awesome PJ tour pros there that we would see different times throughout the year, including Tom Watson, our local hero in KC. And, um, but anyhow, so after a, a good, Oh, you know, had to have been close to 10 years of working at the club level. That's when I decided, well, I got to figure something out because I want to go a different direction with this. And so thank goodness at that time, golf tech was about year number, mm, I don't know, maybe six or seven ish, maybe five. Doesn't matter. They, they were still in a fairly new phase, however, development, that's for sure. But I went up in Chicago, got to got to meet with the uh, city manager there. And he kind of walked me through the process, and, and I was just like, yep, this is what I want. <laughs> this is exactly what I've been looking for. How to take learning and elevate it to an incredibly higher level so that anybody walking through that door is going to be able to get exactly what they need and want to develop and, and get better at this whole thing. And really, to be honest, that's what was missing throughout the entire time, even for my own game. Nobody was giving me the kind of information, feedback, um, detailed processes, um, you know, that I, I, I definitely wanted and, and, and maybe I didn't necessarily uh, express that as clearly as I could have too. And that's another problem with a lot of this, this out here going on. And so with golf tech, then I went on to my next eight years, uh, and, or seven, whatever it is. And, uh, with them, that's where it went to a whole new level. Not only for myself teaching the game because I had the tools I needed and the processes now in place and the environment in place to provide my students with the exactness they needed to get better, um, but I also got a hell of a lot better faster as a teacher as well because it really allowed me to progress and, and work with – I mean, I, I was averaging you know, about 10, 11 lessons per day uh, there throughout my bulk time, uh, at golf tech and, you know, walked out of there with about, you know, around 12,000 some odd lessons given, um, it busy, very busy. Uh, I would book when I would open up my outdoor book at golf tech, it would fill the entire summer would fill up within about a day. And so, um, it was limited time, but uh, so my players knew to book and book like six hours at a time and be done with it. And so anyhow, uh, very busy, very, very productive years. And it really got me to the point where I was exactly where I wanted to be, or at least closer to it in this whole universe teaching golf. And so uh, then life kind of hit, uh, got married, moved around, had kids, things here and there and, and, and relocated again and, and so on and so forth. And so while, while I kind of continued to teach here and there, it, it, it definitely lessened. Um, family became a little more priority uh, at times throughout the process. And so when we got to um, our settling down point, which is where we're at now, we, we finally got here to central Georgia and uh, kids are, kids are growing, you know, and, and, Thank you, Lord. They're doing well and, and fine, and, and things are going good. And so that that's what got me to this stage now of, of figuring out how am I going to do this now? I am in the position to build a teaching base, an academy someday, um, basically bring things to an area that have never existed and, and a lot don't even know. I know a lot of people don't know what golf tech is. Please go look it up, golf tech, www.golftech.com. I lived and breathed within this environment, bio analysis and feedback, video analysis and feedback, um, controlled environment, 
uh, you know, you know, less distractive uh, learning, um, web lesson technology, which I provide via my own ways. And so I'm basically doing everything I did there, but more because now we have better tech. We've got apps within our phones that give us the kind of portability of feedback. So we can take it to the range if we need to, if we want to, if we can take it to the backyard, to, to the in-house and then, and then obviously up at the bays at, uh, uh, the golf pub, which you need to go check out, by the way, www.thegolfpub.com, my partner. And, you know, a 4D motion golf I just brought in, which is the biofeedback capability, except it's it's more. At Golf Tech, we use hip and shoulders. And this uh, system has eight sensors. I can put a sensor on the back of the hands, wrists, uh, forearm, you know, we basically put a sensor darn near anywhere we want and track what's going on is what it boils down to. And it, and it helps us to identify with more preciseness. It kind of, I, I kind of sum it up like this. Look, I took a lot of lessons, quote unquote, and I was educated, but I didn't develop into what they were saying. That was the problem. Um, so that being said, was it a bad lesson? I mean, you be the judge, I guess, right? I, personally, I, I I wish I had today's technology. Let's just put it that way. And I, I, I still see the same thing going on all the time where it's just, you know, kind of on a range, chatting and discussing and, and kind of, you know, but as if, if you're going to get into turning, well, you got to turn more. Okay, what does that mean? What does it look like? What does it feel like? Exactly. We can do everything all instantaneously within – a learning environment and immediately start applying it, which when you go from like say zero degrees of rotation up into the forties, all of a sudden, trust me when I say this, all hell is going to break loose probably in the beginning because you're not going to have the coordination necessarily. So there is a process of learning, not only how to turn feedback necessary to make sure you're doing it correctly. Um, and that's the next part, but also to then, what a process of making sure it's going to work, you know, just learning that alone takes time. And there, there's a certain way to do it that, that will get you there faster than others. Let's put it that way. And that's the other part. Even if you learn something in a lesson, how do you know if you're doing it? I've got the tools needed to make sure you are doing it and can check and see so that we know we're making progress. And so these are all the things that, you know, it, it all started from a simple thing. I wanted the same dang thing y'all wanted is what it boils down to. How the heck do I play much better golf or at least some kind of better golf and maybe even someday somehow find my way to the tour, which, you know, wasn't realistic. And that's fine. But the goal of it is this. I'm telling you from my own personal experience, which led me to figuring it out on my own. And now I'm providing it with 25 years later of years of experience doing this with hundreds and hundreds of, of different players, old and young and beginner and 20 year player. And my guys that went on to play professionally all the way down to, Hey, I'd just like to break a hundred someday. Just Colton here, man. We got in recent months, it's, it's taken a little while, of course, four or five months, but we've gone below 100, uh, close to 90 and first birdies ever. We're, we're moving in the right direction with his game, you know, and, and it's all credit to him. He's put in the hard work. I'm just telling him how to get there. Um, same with uh, Bo, but tracking into the low 70s, about to break through and probably shoot even par here someday um, and, and, and whatnot. And so we got a, a young fellow that finished third in the tournament here recently. So these things work because if players are willing to do – what I know now, then that can guarantee the success. Whereas the old process, which is fine if you want to do it that way, go ahead. But I just know from my own personal experience, which is what got me here today, it, it's less likely to work because it's less information. It's not the entire picture and the entire story. And it's not a process of um, long-term, sustainable, lasting development that also shows an incredibly – you know, a uh, high level change in a player's ability. So going from 30 to a and so on and so forth. So that's kind of the general, you know, uh, there's more to it. There's all kinds of stuff I can throw in there, but that, 
the path was just as, as simple as this. Y'all out there doing YouTube in which everybody comes in the door doing, and then I'm like, well, yeah, that don't apply to you. That's why that's a problem and so on and so forth. I already know all these things. I've spent 25 years. So I'm still studying. I'm, I'm still working my way through 3D um, models like Jacob's 3D and whatnot and understanding all the information in the alpha wars and everything that's going on <clears throat> to, to understand m much more uh, in detail the things like proper uh, forces and torques and how to do them at different points and all this kind of great information, which when you become a, a little bit better player, we can really start to dive into and break it down in, in different ways that have never been seen or heard before, which is important because that takes this to another level, which is important to me because I want to build this off of the idea that we're always going to stay ahead of the game as far as we possibly can. And so I've got these systems coming that players can go home get the feedback necessary, put in the time they need, but put in the proper time doing things correctly. Proper practice, AKA proper process of development done correctly with repetitions is the only magic bullet that exists, which means it's not a magic bullet. You got to work hard at it, but doing the right things, which is my job and goal as a coach and i'm available all week to my students they got questions they're supposed to call text facetime me google meet whatever send me a video and we do it every week everybody's sending me messages i'm spot checking things i'm making sure that's part of the job and so the lesson never ends the lesson is just a time to meet go through as many things as possible figure out what to work on chipping what to work on pitching putting full swing driver reverse iron now let's talk about, well, maybe club fit this. You know, what about if I'm playing that? Everything. And then go out and put in the right amount of time and do it correctly, which it, it, looking back, what I do know for sure is this. My first, oh, easily. Uh, close to seven or eight years, yeah, of golf. Well, maybe a little more than that. But anyways, at least eight years. Unfortunately, I wasted a you know what load of time and I'll be honest, it still ticks me off to today um, because I thought I was doing what I was supposed to be doing and I was taking the lessons and I was getting information. And the minimum I can say is this of the information I was receiving, it was simply lacking. That's for sure. So maybe it wasn't bad or wrong by any stretch, but it wasn't enough and it didn't give me the tools I needed to pursue and attain. And, and I didn't really see my own abilities start to really get better much here until the last, you know, like probably five, six, seven, eight years myself, because by the time I got to golf tech, I got so dang busy. I wasn't even playing golf. I, it's, I had one day off a week, maybe. And uh, I was so tired after 10, 11 lessons. I mean, it was great. I love doing it. That, that's why it was awesome. And, and I'd, I'd never give it back, but I had to completely forego my own golf game for close to 10 years. And uh, it's fine. And it is okay. And that's another important thing. You know, there, there's, there's a, there's an ability within to coach and teach the masses and while I don't think I'm going to say I'm the best at it, I know I'm pretty damn good at it. That's for sure because I've tried so hard and it, and it matters to me a ton. I, I, I used to tell the young guys and gals coming into golf tech all the time that want to become these teachers. And I said, look, it's pretty simple. You got to know your stuff. Duh. That's, that, that's really honestly the easy part. Swing this way, move this way. Club goes that way. Body goes this way. But the more important part is – you better wake up ready to jump out of bed, excited as hell. Even if you out one lesson only, that lesson's got to be the most important you ever given. That lesson's got to be the lesson. If you're, if it was your parents taking the lesson, your brother, your sister, your your grandma, your aunt, your uncle, your children, whatever. Your what? If that was that one of those people, what would you want them to have? Would you want them to have the best lesson ever with the most uh, amount of? appropriate information? I think so. And wouldn't you want that person to care, actually care, not pretend like you care, actually truly care a ton. 
I tell my students, and of course they're going to maybe laugh to some degree, there is nothing more important than me giving the correct information and processes available to my students so that they get better. Them getting better is more important than anything else. And on top of that, the goal is to get players far enough down the, the, the road here where I can literally one day say, bye, don't come back ever again. I mean, maybe tune up lessons here and there, right? But the whole point is we want to get you so freaking good and educated, you don't got to come back and take lessons no more. And, and a lot of players, people say, well, you don't want them coming back. How are you going to make money? I'm like, because they're good. Maybe somebody else will catch wind of that, and maybe they'll want to try to try this out and come take and figure this out for themselves. So a good instructor is trying to get you to the point where you're so far advanced, you don't need them anymore. And that is my goal every day with my students. Very processes in place, the facility. That's why I partnered up with the golf pub. We have a facility where they can go in there even when they're not open Monday through Friday and uh, even Saturday, uh, Sunday now, but, and they can use the facility to develop and practice and get the repetitions necessary to make those changes, the magic bullet. So that's kind of the little, I mean, it's long and that's the problem. You can't, you can't market a story like this to some degree. And so I just want everybody out there to understand and, and know that, you know, well, I'm not from central Georgia, so that's a big problem part of it. But back in KC, I got all kinds of people all over the place that, I, uh, you know, I worked with and whatnot. And, um, you know, and, and that's hard to transfer. So I'm starting over from scratch here, which is, which is great. It's kind of it's a challenge. It's fun. But I know you're out there and I know some of y'all really want to do this. And so it's, it's time to, it's time to take that challenge on. Let's see you use these winter months coming up. And instead of doing the same old things y'all been doing, because I know you've been doing the same old crap for years, some of you. I was in your, I was in your shoes. I was you. That's the most important thing you have to understand. I was you. I was in your shoes. It's what put me here today. I became who I am today because I went through the same crap you're going through, and I went through the same lesson process, uh, lessons without process. And I read and I watched the YouTubes and I did all the stuff, the same, all the junk training aids and blah, 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 you name it. I'm telling you, it's not going to work. There's a reason it's not going to work. And the big part is you're going to learn that right away in day one. The evaluation lesson alone is going to unlock why these things haven't occurred or happened for you. So right now it's time to act. I got a huge lesson sale going on, all kinds of information coming out, professional website going up soon. For now, go to Facebook. Uh, just look up P45 Knuckle Down Golf, uh, and it's all spaced out. So you, if you type it, it should pop up. Um, P45KDG on Twitter, so at P45KDG. And uh, oh, one big long word, P45 Knuckle Down Golf at gmail.com. Instagram, I don't know. I've been trying to get it up and going. And I, somebody's got to help me with that. If you're an Instagram you know, genius, let me know. And, uh, yeah, and, and most importantly, if you can, please like, smash that button, subscribe, uh, uh, share. The more uh, eyeballs we can get it going on this, the more we can build this thing. And hopefully I'm going to have a facility built in, you know, whether it be hopefully at the pub and, and whatnot, where you're going to have even more dedicated practice space with better tools and, and, and things and and. You know, we're trying to build something huge here. Basically, I got I, I know of at least four people now in the area that are literally driving to Atlanta. One's even flying to the coast of Georgia for crying out loud. You know, they they might they're probably getting some good stuff. So be it, and that's great. And we don't need to. We got all this right here in Warner Robins now. You ain't got to go nowhere. I've got the same information. I've got the experience. I've got over eighteen thousand lessons taught. Over fifty thousand lessons or hours uh, teaching. And, uh, and I've seen, I've seen the biggest and the best golf techs, the biggest uh, global teaching company in the world. Nobody even come close to how big, how big they are. And so we got it all here right now. And now's time. Let's get ready for 2025. That's what this is all about. So hopefully that's a good insight a little bit. Um, I know some probably, Hey, who's, where, who's is, what is this thing? What, who, well, there you go. I hope that gave you some info and I know it's long, but, 
it's important. And that'll be that for today, folks. Brian Carpenter, P45 Knuckle Down Golf, No BS Golf on YouTube. Check it out. Take care.